Hi folks, John Cordisco back again. Another game from round one, and this time from the U.S. Championship. The U.S. Championship and the U.S. Women's Championship are being played concurrently. In St. Louis, Missouri, one of my favorite tournaments. One, it's a great tournament, and two, is I'm an American, so you got to love the U.S. Championship. It's between Ray Robson, who now lives in St. Louis, and Sergey Ehrenberg. I'm not sure where he lives. He's originally, I believe he lives in Virginia. He's originally from Israel. He's now playing under the U.S. Chess Federation. Let's get to it. Robson's white. Ehrenberg is black. It's going to be a Petrov. We'll go through the first few moves. Pretty much standard stuff. The bishop e7. Knight c6. I do want to say there were two decisive games in round one in the U.S. Open. and It's not the U.S. Men's Championship, even though they're all men. Women, if they qualify, can play in the U.S. Open. But I do have to say this, though. I was a little disappointed in... A couple of the games, I thought I'd see a little bit more fight. And I understand you got to save your energy in a long tournament, but we'll just leave it at that. This is one of the few fighting games from the U.S. Open, at least in this round. Queen of D2. Bishop E6. White Castle's long, which really surprised me. Queen of D7. King to B1. You're going to have to do that eventually anyway when you castle on the queen side. So... This pawn, unfortunately, unlike the king side, is laying loose. Bishop f6. Now you've got both a black's bishops bearing down on the castle of king. We'll see how this works out. h4. You're not castled on the king side. Might as well go for some space. And black castles long as well. That was another surprise. I thought maybe he castled short and they would duke it out in a pawn storm, very much like a Sicilian. Bishop g5, bishop takes, h takes. It opens the file. I think more than anything else, though, Ray wants to get the rook to here so it can come across. As Jennifer Shahadi calls it, one of the commentators, a rover, a rook that goes up and over. Bishop g4, rook c1. Get rid of that pin. Bishop takes, pawn takes. I got my Fritz 13 computer on off screen. It's a less than a half a point advantage for white, so we'll call it even. F6, F4, king to B8. Same thing on the black side as on the white side. You need to come over and protect that A pawn. Bishop G2. Now Ray's got a nice bishop bearing right down. And if you notice, both the black's bishops are gone. Rook. Rook CD1, knight E7. C4, knight G6. Going after that pawn. Rook to H3. Here's where Ray does what I call the rover. Jennifer Shahadi calls the rover. Pawn takes. Rook to B3. Pawn sacrifice. Let's see how it works out. B6. F takes. So Ray gets his pawn back. Knight to F4. Bishop F3. If he had gone Bishop F1, Queen of D8 would have been a good response. After Bishop F3, H6. The computer also called for Instead of h6, rook to f7, and then a4. I think what blacks in this case is trying to double up down here to go after this. But after h6, rook b to e3, now raise double up on the e file. Rook to f7. If black had taken rook to e7, queen to d8, queen to b4, and it's over. It's resignable. So those three pawns aren't so free, folks. G6, hitting the rook. Knight takes. Bishop H5. That's what Ray really wanted. He sacrificed that pawn just for that. And when rook goes to F6, bishop takes, rook takes. Rook D7. Now he gets in. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Now, oddly enough, the computer right now has it as 0, 0.00, which is a dead draw. I think that was a good job by Ray to get rid of that pawn for some incentive. You need to keep pushing, keep your opponent back on his heels. Even if it is a drawn position, you have to put pressure on him. Queen of d8, c5. Now, we all see why d takes, rook to d7. And right now, it still shows it is even, but I wouldn't want to play black right now. I really wouldn't. Queen to h4. Double question mark. I remember watching the video of this game live on uschesschamps.com. And I'll leave that address in the description below the video. Yasser Sarawan and Jennifer Shahadi were commentating with Maurice Ashley. And... Yasser questioned that queen to h4. Computer, instead of queen to h4, the computer calls her queen to c8. Then after a4, rook to g4. And it's a minute advantage for white. Black still in the game. After queen to h4, queen to a5. Rook d to e7. It says secures the win because after a6... Queen to d7, queen takes, queen takes. It's a rook and two pawns for a queen, and of course that's over. So queen to a5, rook to c8. Now, even though black's up two pawns, white has a half a pawn advantage, which means you're under the gun. What to do, what to do, what to do. Queen takes the pawn. Now Ray's only down one pawn. If he had played a3 instead, after rook to g4, queen takes. Comes out basically the same. After queen takes, this is where Sergei Ehrenberg... And this is a mistake that they found later in analyzing the game. He went queen to g5. Double question mark. I'm watching the computer go up and score. Right now, it's almost six-point advantage for white. And Yasser and Jennifer Shahadi found this move that would have held out. Rook to e6. Interesting move. You see that white has a back rank problem. If Rook takes, Rook checks, and White loses. If he had played Rook to e6, Rook e to d1, and Queen to g4, and it sits beautiful for Black. Considering the pressure he's under, it's a dead draw. Queen to b4, and it's over. And I think Ray knows it. He's got a hell of an attack coming. B6 only move. A4. Beautiful move. Now, who would have saw that subtle move there? I know I wouldn't. Top two moves of the computer, A4 and A3. Queen A3, believe it or not, causes the drop by over five points. <laughs> Except the Queen to A3, Queen to A5, and I think Black might be able to stay alive. After A4, C5, Queen to b5. I mean, just look at this. What's coming? Rook. Queen to a6. Rook. Rook takes. King takes. Rook can't take. Because of this check. And, of course, the rook comes back. The queen mates. So king has to take, queen takes a7, check, king to d6, queen takes check, and it's just piling up. That black king is out in the open. Rook to d7, rook to d1, and that's where Sergei Ehrenberg resigned. This is uh, Sergei's first U.S. championship. Give you an idea what would have happened. King to e8, check. Give you an idea. I'll just breeze through it quickly. He loses the rook. Check. 
you get the idea. There's no point continuing. Anyway, folks, that's one of the exciting games from round one of the U.S. Championship. Kudos to Ray. There's a Fisher Prize in this tournament. If you win all the games, I believe it's 11 in a row, you receive an extra $64,000. $1,000 per square on a chessboard. I think it was in 1964 as well that Fisher did it. I'm not sure. Right now, Alex Lenderman won. Ray Robson won. All the rest of the games were drawn. So technically, those are the only two guys that could possibly win the Fisher Prize. Anyway, folks, that's the one of the games from round one of the U.S. Championship. I hope you enjoyed it. I want everybody to please subscribe if you can. I would personally appreciate it. And please click the like button. That would be awesome. And if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.